Fermi's lucky 13th anniversary comes up next month, near the end of March. Fermi was a difficult launch for NVIDIA, being their hottest running and highest power consuming graphics architecture to date. Many reviewers were taken aback by the high temperatures and low performance of the architecture, at least relative to AMD's offerings. Fermi's initial launch was also delayed by six months, while its follow-up was on schedule, resulting in the unusual fact that both of these GPUs I have here launched in the same year. The GF100-based GTX 465 launched just after the initial models rolled out, in May of 2010, while the revised GF110-based GTX 580 launched in November of the same year. The GTX 465 cuts down GF100's 480 shaders to just 352, with 44 texture mapping units and 32 render output units. Now on paper, the GTX 580 is just about exactly 50% more GPU than the 465, with 512 shaders, 64 TMUs, 48 ROPs, and 50% more memory bandwidth. While Fermi was NVIDIA's first DirectX 11 compatible architecture, let's be honest, if you tried to show off your cool 512 shader NVIDIA card to someone today, they'd say, yeah, cool 1630, bud. Yeah, it's not a lot of CUDA cores these days, so how do these things perform in modern games? Let's find out. Elsa, bottoms up. This video is just a thinly veiled hello world for my new PCR Express test bench. I'm planning an upcoming video about building minimum cost AM4 systems for folks at the trailing edge of PC upgrades, and for giggles, I decided I'd try stuffing my 5950X into this A320 motherboard that I bought for like 50 bucks a year ago. Turns out, it works pretty well, even if the multicore scores are nothing to write home about. Also, this board has Windows 7 drivers, so you better believe I'm planning on testing my old DX10 chonkers on this thing. Oh, and if the logo on that fan looks familiar, that's because it is. This is the low-profile little brother of the Thermalright Peerless Assassin, the AXP120. Thanks, Hardware Canucks. Anyway, Fermi in 2023, how bad is it? Well, it's pretty bad. Let's start with the 465. Now, Fermi might technically support DirectX 11, but driver support for these cards ended years ago, so many games these days simply refuse to start or immediately crash after starting. That was certainly the case with Cyberpunk, which is not at all surprising, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. However, Stray, Valheim, and even VR Chat, in, in desktop mode at least, run just fine on the GTX 465. Well, just fine, might be giving this hobbled GF100 a little bit too much credit. Here, have a look. In Valheim, I was so shocked that it even started and ran that all I did was run a lap around the starting area. The 465 rewarded me with 30 to 35 FPS for my efforts at 1080p with lowest settings. Stray also surprised me by starting right up, and once I made a quick trip through the graphical options menu to turn down everything that I could, including enabling a 50% render scale, the 465 rewarded me with 28 to 35 FPS, but a pretty consistent frame time. Of course, the 1 gig of VRAM is pretty painful here, as everything looks like a smeary mess, unfortunately. Lastly, I booted up VRChat in desktop mode and warped over to the After Dark Plaza, one of my favorite performance testing worlds. Walking into the main courtyard, the 465 returned between 35 and 42 FPS, and by some miracle, the textures were even recognizable. <laughs> Don't get used to that. A gig of VRAM in 2023 is hardly anything. Lastly, since I know someone's going to ask, I did run Minecraft Java Edition on the 465. This is vanilla Minecraft at 25 chunks render distance, all graphics options on, 1080p windowed maximized. Runs like a champ. On to the esports games, starting with Overwatch. Uh, first, some apologies. I didn't realize that Overwatch Gate keeps its bot matches behind mandatory completion of the training level, so all you get this time is training level footage for now. Bot matches will appear in the next matchup. 
Anyway, the 465 delivers 80 to 100 FPS in 1080p with DRS enabled, dropping to 60 to 70 when there's a full screen effect like Widowmaker's Vision Ultimate. Also, the single gigabyte of texture RAM doesn't seem to be hobbling the 465 really at all? That is some impressive optimization. Up next, Apex Legends. Apex does not fare as nicely with 1 gig of VRAM as Overwatch did. Even just the lobby screen is a blurry mess, and things don't get better in the training map. Apex at 1080p lowest settings with the dynamic res scale on runs at about 40 FPS. But we'll come back to Apex later. Next up is Dota 2. Dota 2 remains pretty accessible for lower end hardware, and the 465 ran it just fine. It wasn't quite able to hit 60 FPS at 1080p, but the frame timing was very consistent and smooth, and the only difficulties I had playing the game were the result of my own ability to play the game. Relatedly, League of Legends. League famously runs on anything, and the GTX 465 is no exception. In a 1v1 practice round here, League stayed mostly pinned to its 240 FPS limit, even in firefights. And lastly, Fortnite. Again, at 1080p lowest settings, including a 50% res scale and epic view distance, the 465 ran Fortnite around 70 FPS, with dips down to 60 and bursts up to 90 FPS. Fortnite's textures also suffered from the lack of video memory, but the game was plenty playable and enemies remained easy to spot, minus the lack of resolution. This got me curious about the 580. On paper, it's about 50% more GPU, so I was expecting about 50% more performance out of it, right? Seems reasonable. In service of this comparison, I started out by running some synthetic benchmarks on the 465 before swapping in its bigger brother. The first test was Unigen Heaven, DX11 Extreme. I had both cards loop through all the scenes before starting the benchmark to make sure they were good and heat-soaked. <laughs> 88 degrees on that 580, it sure is a fermi. Things got off to a much smoother start on the 580 than the 465, and when the benchmark completed, I was presented with a score of just about double. This extremely surprised me. Maybe Unigen was too easy of a benchmark? So I ran 3D Mark 11 and 3D Mark Firestrike, and again was rewarded with scores about double what the 465 delivered. Moving into testing actual games, I started with Valheim again. And indeed, running around the same starting area stones, I was presented with roughly double the frame rate of the 465. Stray was next and presented me with nearly triple the frame rate. Almost 90 FPS with the same settings as the 465. How? Lastly, and at this point expectedly, VR chat in desktop mode hit its frame rate limiter of 60 FPS in After Dark Plaza. So, okay, this is looking really promising for, for the big dog games. The 580 is looking like it's going to sweep the esports games. First, Overwatch, with the same settings as the 465. 150 to 170 FPS in the training area, dropping to only... only... 100 when activating Widowmaker's Infrasight. What? Apex Legends. Despite a 50% increase in video memory, Apex still looked like a mess. Blurry garbage everywhere. However... It now ran with a smooth 62-ish frames per second, and it also just felt snappier and better handling overall. This game came closest to the 50% performance uplift I was expecting from the 580. Dota 2 leapt up to triple digits in quiet areas of the map, dropping to around 90 FPS in fights. Not quite double the performance, but another good showing for the 580. Not bad. Similarly, League stayed absolutely pinned to its frame limiter, even in firefights. Ha! <laughs> Got her. And last, but certainly not least, Fortnite, at the same settings as the 465, yielded 80 to 160 FPS, keeping a pretty consistent 100 to 120 through most of the bot match I tested it in. Again, almost double the performance of the 465. So, Fermi wasn't a particularly well-received architecture when it was new. There were videos of people, you know, frying eggs on the GTX 480, it ran so hot. Once Kepler launched at the start of 2012, with literally three times the number of shaders as top-of-the-line Fermi, it basically just slid out of people's minds. At least, it did for me. I was way more interested in the weird stuff AMD was doing with Graphics Core Next at the time. 
I guess since I've done Fermi, now I need to do a similar look back for TerraScale as well, don't I? <laughs> Talk about a weird GPU architecture. But that's for a future video. If you enjoyed this trip to Anachronism Town, please consider giving this video a like. And if you're down for more GPU anachronisms, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. There's plenty more where this came from. A lot more. Send help. Anyway, that's all I've got for you for now. Be good to one another, and have a great night.